Hello, we are live here at Digital DJ Tips and I am usually want to, I hate it when people go live and say, oh, can you hear me and stuff? But I'm making no apologies this time because we have got all kinds of issues that we've been dealing with. So I'm gonna say, if you can hear and see me okay, you let me know. Uh, I've just thought of something else that might be broken as well, actually, now that, uh, now that we think about it, uh, because we've been, yep, suffering all kinds of problems. I think that thing, that I was looking at is okay. Uh, we have had the microphone going down and we've had our systems going down. So anyway, we're live now and that's the important thing. Uh, but do let me know if you can see and hear everything okay, please, because we wanna make sure that this is useful to you. If you're watching the recording, Sorry for all of that, uh, but we are now uh, ready to give you what it said in the description here on YouTube, which is a look at how to use Spotify in 2023 to DJ with. Because why wouldn't you? It's, uh, Spotify is the way that we DJ nowadays, right? Well, at least the way we listen to our music, uh, and therefore, why couldn't it be the way that we DJ? Well, there's a very simple reason for why it couldn't be the way we DJ, and that is because the good people at Spotify decided to take away the ability to use its software in your DJ software. You used to be able to use certain types of DJ software and have your Spotify library showing right there, and it was no problem. You could. DJ with it, but you can't do that anymore because it's not available in any DJ software at all, which is a problem because we all use Spotify, right? It's the best streaming service. So how do you do it? How do you DJ with Spotify in 2023? I'm gonna give you four ways now. Now the first one and the fourth one are kind of ways of doing it, but the two in the middle are the ones that we're gonna concentrate on. You'll understand why when we, when we move on to it. The first one is just to go into Spotify and to go into your settings at the top. Uh, and then when you're in there, go to your, go scroll down and go to this area here where it says crossfade songs and auto mix. Click these two things on and then within Spotify itself you can just play a playlist, you can rearrange your playlist and do all that stuff, move tracks around, hit play and it will play it back uh, and it will cut out the gaps. It's great for parties, it's great for when you are basically not really a DJ but you want to use Spotify to play music. It's not what you're here for because this is Digital DJ Tips, we're a DJ school, and you wanna know how to use it in your DJ software. For instance, we've got Serato set up here, uh, which is one of the big DJ apps. How do you use Spotify here? So that is what we're gonna concentrate on now. I'm gonna show you two ways of using what is essentially the same technique, which is to use a piece of software to take your Spotify playlist that you want to DJ with and put it into something that you can use on Serato. So let's look at how that works. Now Serato and Rekordbox and Virtual DJ and then other software depending upon uh, which ones they've plugged in uh, tend to use four streaming services. Tidal, SoundCloud, Beatport, and beat source. And I'm gonna show it to you today with Tidal because Tidal is the closest to Spotify. It's got the catalog which overlaps the most out of those four with Spotify. So it's one that you're likely to find most of the tracks are the same. So we're gonna take our playlist from Spotify and we're gonna put it into Tidal. And I'm gonna show you a way to do it for free as long as it's less than 500 tunes and it's very, very quick. So how do you do it? Let's have a look. And you need to use one of three services which I've got here uh, that I'm gonna show you. The three services are Soundis, which is at soundiiz.com, Free Your Music, which is at freeyourmusic.com, and Tune My Music, which is at tunemymusic.com. And the one I'm gonna to use today is Tune My Music, although any of these will work and all of these are tested by us. So you're gonna to go to tunemymusic.com and you're simply gonna click on Let's Start. You're gonna click on Spotify as your source, which is step one of four. Now you can, Click on load from Spotify account, give it your Spotify login details and it will log in and you can pick a playlist. But there's actually an easier way than that of doing it, which is why I chose this service. Go to your Spotify, right click on the playlist that you want to DJ with, go to share at the bottom and click copy link to playlist. Uh, that link is now copied to your clipboard. clipboard. Go back to tune my music and then you can uh, click on there, right click on there and paste. 
So that is now pasted into this window here and click load from URL. So now it's going to go into Spotify and grab that playlist. There it is. There's my DJ set in Spotify. This corresponds to the tracks I've got in this DJ set here. I've only got 10 tracks to make it quick to show you. So this is the list that I would want to DJ with that is currently in Spotify. So I've now put that into Tune My Music. Now I have to choose a destination. So I'm going to choose Tidal because that's where I want them to end up. Now, if you haven't already logged into Tidal, it will ask for your Tidal login details. I did it just before going live today. So now I can click Start Transfer. And you can see it's now processing all the music. It says Transfer Completed. So now if I go to my Tidal account, this is my Tidal, and go down here to DJ Set, there is everything from my Spotify here. Now you might say, Phil, you mean I need a Tidal account? Well, yeah, you do. But if you just want to do this for a one-off, let's say you are um, DJing your friend's wedding and they've given you a list of music that they want you to play, but it's in Spotify. You can just do that and you can get a one-month trial to Tidal, which will be free. So, tune my music, up to 500 tunes, free. Tidal, one-month trial, free. Cut and paste from your Spotify that you already subscribed to, and you've got that list now in Tidal. And let's prove it. Let's head over to our, um, to our um, Serato. So my Serato, I've got Tidal down here. Uh, I'm gonna go into my playlists down here and open my playlists and there's my DJ set. These are the tracks that were originally in my Spotify, ready for me to DJ with here inside my Serato with my DJ gear. Easy, done. That is how to get your music from Spotify to Tidal, uh, up to 500 tunes for free. Uh, in, if you uh, grab one of those trial accounts at Tidal, it should give you a month for free. So the third way of doing it, this is when you're gonna get serious. This is for you if you don't wanna leave Spotify. You've been on Spotify for the last 10 years. You've got so much in there. You love it. You've got third party things plugged into Spotify that you really like using. Spotify is better than any other streaming service for all that stuff. Uh, it's got more things you can use with it than any other service and you might be heavily invested in it and you don't want to leave Spotify in order to DJ with it, but you do want to DJ with it. Um, I'll just give you an example, by the way, over on Digital DJ Tips at the moment, we've just reviewed, or rather had a quick look at this app called TrackNack, and this builds really nice lists inside Tidal, eh, sorry, inside Spotify, by referencing Discogs and also your behavior to give you, basically, it's like the weekly release radar, but a lot better. You can actually go and try this by clicking on the news story, and we give you $5 of free credit for trying that. Uh, so go take a look at TrackNack over on the Digital DJ Tips website if you are interested in looking at that. But there's just one example of something you can plug in to Spotify that you don't get with Tidal, you don't get with the other services. Spotify is pretty much the best of all when it comes to that stuff. So you might not want to leave Spotify, but you do want to DJ. And you don't want to be cut and pasting every time you update something. Well, those services I was showing you have your back because sound is free your music, and Tune My Music all have the ability to sync. By clicking on Syncs and setting up Syncs here, you can have it automatically sync all your playlists to Tidal. So anything you do in Spotify goes over to Tidal. Now you won't be surprised to hear that this is the point where you're gonna to have to subscribe. These services cost two, three, five dollars a month. And at that point you get the ability to say, look, I want you to sync everything or just sync certain playlists. And then every time you go to your DJ equipment and log into Tidal, everything you've done in between times on your Spotify is there, barring a track or two. There's always gonna be a track or two that's different and that won't show up, but the high 90s percent will show up. And that's a really good way if you can afford to pay for Tidal because you're gonna get that free trial for a month and then you're gonna be paying for it and one of these services. So at that point, I do think it's worth thinking pretty hard about switching to Tidal as your only streaming service, unless you've got really good reasons to stay with Spotify. And there are good reasons, we've already just discussed a couple, because it's gonna cost you less. But look, you might have a Spotify family account, everyone else uses it, in which case, hey, this is a good way of keeping everything in sync. And these services are great because they work with all the other streaming providers, as you probably saw when we logged in there. There's lots of others you can choose to go to and from. So that is another way of doing it. Now, the fourth and final way of doing it, which is a bit of a cop-out because it's not actually a way of DJing with Spotify, or is it? Well, 
I think the best way to use streaming services like Tidal, like Spotify, like Beatport, like BeatSource, like all of these services, is to use them for music discovery, it's to use them to find new songs because they are brilliant at that. They are not so good, even today, even in 2023, as your sole source of music for DJing with because they, re they need Wi-Fi. If they change their deals with the various record labels, songs might appear and disappear kind of willy-nilly. So you might log on and something that was there last week isn't there now. And they don't give you actual ownership of the music. So there's certain things that you can't do. You can't record your sets inside the DJ software, for instance. If you want to rip those tunes so you can use the acapellas ahead of time and put them back in your DJ software or start taking parts out for drum loops and using them in your productions and stuff, you don't really own the songs. They're just there for you to stream with. So for all those reasons, if you're getting serious about your DJ, then you should start building your own local music collection. Buy the songs you really want and use the streaming services for requests or for those gigs where you just want to grab some music you wouldn't normally play. Like say you're, you're doing a one-off wedding for a friend but you're normally a house DJ. You know, they're brilliant for that kind of thing. And some of the techniques I've shown you here are really good for doing that. But it is always a good idea in the long run to assemble your own music collection. So if you've come to this video as a new DJ thinking, I want to DJ with streaming alone, I don't want to assemble my own music. In time, it's definitely worth building that collection of your own music. You know, in our book, Rock the Dance Floor, we teach DJing on page three. It's so important. We've got a whole list of the steps of DJing here, uh, which are gear, music, techniques, playing out and promoting yourself. This is all about music. This is about getting the right music into your collection. And hopefully I've shown you ways of getting your music out of Spotify and into your DJ collection today. But also hopefully I've taught you that really, as a DJ, as a real DJ wanting real success, you ought to be starting to build a music collection. These are like the tools of your trade. It's like a, a toolbox full of spanners and screwdrivers and so on that would be to a carpenter. You know, at the end of the day, owning your own music is the way to go, but use the streaming services wisely, and hopefully some of the tips I've shared today will help you to do that. If you want a copy of this book, by the way, head over to the Digital DJ Tips website. We've already looked at it once today. Just click on the place at the top of the Digital DJ Tips website where you see the big join button, this one here, uh, and doing that, We'll take you to this page, sign up. Uh, you will not only get our How to Improve as a DJ newsletter every week, which is great in itself, but I'll give you a copy of this book as a thank you uh, that you can download instantly. So hey, uh, and if you're really serious about it and you really want to learn those five steps, we've got a course that can teach you that as well. So that course is, again, on the Digital DJ Tips website. Uh, you will uh, see the courses when you go there. Scroll down and click on the Complete DJ course. This course is based on the book I just held up. Uh, it's our flagship program. It's helped tens of thousands of DJs to improve their DJing. So go take a look at the course. There's a little video there where I explain it. Uh, it takes everything out of here and brings it to life. Right, that is your training today. And now I'm gonna breathe a deep sigh of relief because I think we've got through it without any more major catastrophes. Uh, and if you've been watching the recording of this, you can switch off now and go and play with Spotify and Tidal. But if you're watching it live, hello, sorry uh, for all the messing around. We're over an hour late with this show and we had two false starts. Uh, we had, I'll tell you what went wrong. It was a complete cacophony of errors. The first thing was that this, which has served me absolutely fine for God knows how long, this poor little microphone reached the end of its natural life. Uh, this little plug here has developed a fault. And every time it brushed on my trousers here, it kind of crackled and then cut out. So I was running tests with that all the last hour to find out what was wrong. This one here is one that I had to, this is for all you tech geeks, uh, I had to hot wire in using extra cables here because this is really made for iPhones and stuff. So it's got the wrong cable on the end of it. So I had to find an adapter to plug it into our mic pack, uh, which is what we use. We use li these little Rode mic packs here. Uh, I had to find an adapter to get it to work. So in doing all that, I obviously sense check the whole system. And we have a special system here that lets us go live uh, called Atem. And this is what Atem looks like. And I got to this page here and this fader here was flying up and down at top speed, flying up and down like it had a life of its own. 
And then I kind of like scratched my head, rebooted everything, and then this one was flying up and down. And then I thought, well, what if one of these flies up and down? These are actually controlling the live show. So I couldn't go live until I'd figured out what the hell was going on. And do you know what it was? It was the weirdest thing in the world. I had plugged in this controller the Hercules, uh, the Hercules T7, uh, in order to use it, to kind of like have it on the opening credits and so on. And this was interfering with our box here, this box here that you can see here, which is the Atem box that controls the, the whole live show. The, the MIDI from there was interfering with the MIDI from here and it was throwing all my faders up and down. So I'm there scratching my head saying my microphone doesn't work and my faders are doing their own thing. So it took me an hour to figure all of that out. And in doing so, I wiped off all the settings from this box by mistake and I had to go off to the master production computer and find the backup file and load them again. So really, I said to you last week, when I come back from my holidays, I tend to have uh, the first live show or the second live show goes completely wrong because I'm out of practice. It waited, it lulled me into a full sense of security and uh, waited for the third live show uh, when I thought I was on top of everything. So I wasn't and now I am again and that microphone that can do one. I don't want to see it ever again. Uh, it didn't go far enough what I threw it that time. It did that time. Uh, the team have already ordered me some more microphones. Anyway, I thought you might like to know what went wrong there. Uh, and uh, on that, it's now time to do what we do best, which is go over to you guys and girls on the live chat and answer any questions you've got about streaming, but also anything else that's come up. Uh, and again, one more time, sorry for all the messing around. It certainly has been a fun hour or two here. Right, back to the chat then. Uh, here it is, this is how it all works here, people. It comes in live. Uh, here from uh, you guys and girls on this panel here uh, and then I just kind of sit here and go through what you are saying. So um, let's go scroll back to the beginning of the actual live stream that worked which was the one that started about uh, 20 minutes ago uh, and hello to all of you giving thumbs up Zombie, Pixel US, Kesha, Benny, Jay, all of you saying uh, thank you very much for <laughs> fixing this Phil. Uh, it's a pleasure, it's good to have done so. Um, Jay says I use Spotify um, but I use a download app. Well you can do that in theory however that is technically illegal uh, and of course there's lots of steps to jump through but uh, you be the judge of how you're using your streaming services along those lines. Um, cool fan Garen says it's all working as it should now thank you over there on Twitch. Sound is good and video good says Jay. Uh, I can see and hear you well says Benny. Thank you so much all for helping me. Picture needs attention sound is good. Yeah the picture's not bright enough is it? That's because I had to reset everything. Uh, should we go and do that now? Go and turn the camera up. I'll show you how that works if you want. We have a little camera control here with our gain and brightness and so on. So I can go into here and push the gain up a little bit here. I'll probably just use that one to push it up a bit. What's that look like now? Oh, it's a bit too bright maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's all right. Anyway, we'll do some tweaking uh, when we get this live stream done. But thank you for sharing the, uh, the picture feedback there as well. Um, right. Uh, Jamie on Facebook says, um, I'm glad I have a Mix Stream Pro with Tidal built in. Um, to be honest, I haven't used DJ software in years. Yeah, the Mix Stream Pro is great. This is the Mix Stream Pro. This is the Go version that's got the built-in battery as well. But these are just so easy if you're using a streaming service. You've got Wi-Fi and you don't have to worry about plugging stuff in and stuff. I do like them. It's why I uh, used it when I was teaching my, my 10, now 11 year old, uh, to DJ because it made it very easy for her. Um, I still can play with Spotify, says DJ Gartek on YouTube, but with an Android and I've not updated my DJ app and it still works. Don't up upgrade that app because the second you do it will stop working. Uh, Diet Waffles says this certainly is a big change. Is streaming the future of DJing? It's a really big question Diet Waffles. Uh, I think it is eventually but I think we've got a while to go. You know DJ gear like this here, uh, this is the Pioneer Pro gear of course. We've got an A9 mixer and CDJ 3000s. This kind of gear already has got Beatport plugged in. So Beatport is in the Pro DJ booth already, but also it's got Cloud Library Direct, I think that's what it's called, where you can log in and you can access your own library, your own music, without taking a USB drive. And I think that's gonna be the future as well. DJs will just turn up and expect fast internet in the booth, log into their music and not worry about having to export all their music and so on, because it means you can prepare up to the second you walk into the club, you can prepare everything on your phone, on the, on the Rekordbox app, and then when you're ready, 
login of the club system and all your changes, even down to the stuff you did the second before you went live is there. So you can buy music nowadays and put it straight into the record box app on your phone. You could literally be in the taxi on the way to the club buying the latest music uh, and putting it into your phone and then log in and it's all there. And you can never do that with a USB. So for touring DJs, great, really good because it means that you are up to date all the time and you're not having to do lame imports and exports from your laptop. So yes, I think streaming music is the way forward, but I think we've got a while to go before it's fully accepted and fully reliable. Uh, Mixmaster G says, especially for Dutch people, uh, so for Dutch tracks, Spotify is the only game in town. Uh, Benny says, this is really interesting. Uh, which services can a DJ use for live DJing if not Spotify? We've covered them. Uh, Tidal, um, Beatport and Beatsource and SoundCloud, although Deezer is in Virtual DJ as well. Um, so um, some of you are saying that there's some stuff that isn't on Tidal that is on Spotify. Yeah, you know, you might want to try it with other services, but uh, for most of the DJs on our books kind of thing, um, Tidal seems to be the one that fits best. Um, so this is from Diet Waffles, who says, my ex was outraged when her downloads were gone from Apple Music, uh, yet people do think it's their music and then they stop subscribing, it's not there anymore. I hope she didn't leave you because of that, Diet Waffles. So I'm, I'm being facetious. Um, so uh, this one is from Andrew, who says, does Tidal allow you to play a song request on the fly? Or do you have to restart Serato to sync? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I do know that on some Something like this you can do it because my daughter my 11 year old daughter who DJed for three hours at her end of term party um, using Tidal uh, she ended up on her phone with her friends finding songs that she forgot to add to a playlist adding them to a Tidal playlist on her phone and then accessing them on the mix stream and DJing them in the middle of a set I know grown-up DJs I know the adult DJs who would not dare do that, and there was she doing it. So I know you can do it on the standalone gear. I'm not sure about Serato without checking. Um, so Grand says, hey Phil, have you figured out the power adapter for the T7? When will you show us this new gear? Right, this is another uh, piece of idiocy from me. This here wouldn't work when I plugged the power in. Then I figured out you had to plug the USB in as well. So no lights come on, nothing happens, it just looks like it's dead on arrival. As soon as you plug the USB lead in, it all wakes up. So it wasn't their fault at all. Apologies Hercules, it does work and we will be reviewing that very soon. What else are you talking about people? Uh, so Chase says, as a new DJ, what's the best way to upload your mix pictures to all the streaming platforms? Uh, on these Tuesday shows, we stick to the subject of the show to make it more useful for everyone, but come back on Thursday at the same time. We're actually an hour earlier, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern, when we will, uh, we can cover other questions for you. So Char Char Charlo says, I transferred my Spotify collection to Tidal, uh, but for some reason it doesn't show up in the new Rekordbox mobile app on my iPad. It works fine on my MacBook Pro. Maybe you can do a full video about the Rekordbox mobile app. We do want to do that because I think the Rekordbox mobile app is really interesting, so it is on our list. Uh, Chase, as a new DJ, what's the best way to upload? Oh, right, so stop cut and pasting your questions. Ask once, please. If I see you cut and pasting, I won't answer your questions at all. Uh, so this is from DJ Mike Marquez, who says, much love to Phil and the family here. Definitely the lapel mics have a lifespan with all the bending they go through. It's true, you know, they're plugged in down here and you're twisting and turning and you're leaning down uh, and they're getting twisted like this. I reckon that one's probably lasted me seven years or eight years. So uh, yeah, I think uh, the poor little thing has had its day. Uh, and I was most unceremonious when I chucked it away then, wasn't I? But hey. Um, so, uh, Catherine, Cat's Groove, uh, thank you for uh, being, uh, being a member of the community, chatting away with everyone else. I can see that two or three of you are having a conversation down there that doesn't need my input at all. Good on you. Um, so, uh, what else have we got to say about Spotify? Um, so, Mixmaster G, who's always best uh, at answering these highly technical questions on the fly, uh, and I always appreciate it. So, you can switch the streaming services live. People asking about whether 
whether you can switch streaming services on the fly. Uh, you can on all software, but Serato can only access one at a time. It's one of the limitations of Serato that it could only access one at a time. Uh, Chaotic Entertainment says, I knew three years ago that your daughter was going to follow in your footsteps, Phil. You know what? She's not shown any interest in DJing since, but she's already played a three hour DJ set in front of a load of people. So she's got it in her. Uh, so there we go. Right. I think I'm going to stop here because we're going to quit while we're ahead. Thank you very much. Sorry for all the messing around to bring this with you today. Um, I trust you'll join me again on Thursday when I hope it will all go smoothly. I always say, though, the best thing about live streams is that they do sometimes go wrong. And today we had a really good example of uh, everything that could go wrong going wrong. We got to the end though. It's not what happens. It's how you deal with it that counts. I hope you find this useful. Meanwhile, for me, Phil here in the studio until Thursday, get good, get out there, make the moments. I'll see you again very soon. Till then, bye-bye.